Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about whether you should be using a heat pack or an ice pack immediately after injury to help with your pain and to help speed up your recovery, speed up that healing process. And I think it's a really interesting com uh, topic of conversation because talking to a lot of people in the industry and talking to a lot of people in general, there's no real hard and fast rule that we've come up with or that we sort of all agree upon that tells us whether we should be using ice or heats after an injury. Um, I think a lot of it comes down to sort of what you've been brought up with, but also your personal experience, which is really important, obviously, at the end of the day. And hopefully this video doesn't necessarily, well, it's not necessarily here to force you to change your thinking, but I would love to add an extra layer of perspective onto what you already know and what you feel works to arm you with enough information and enough good information that you can then make the best decision for you and your specific time of need. So if you've got some pain that you're trying to change, if you're trying to speed up the healing process, uh, if you feel like one thing works better for you than another, we're going to put all that in together so that you can come out with a really strong series of things to do or at least an extra modality that you can use to help you get to where you want to be really quickly. So, uh, so before we get into the video, obviously if you go into enjoy it, if you find this uh, information useful and actionable, more importantly, please consider leaving a like. And obviously, if you enjoy the content, please consider subscribing. Those two things really help these videos get out to more people. At the end of the day, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get some good information out there. Hopefully, you start changing some broader perspectives on some things that are a little bit old school um, with new information that works. Uh, and we can do that, hopefully, with that interaction. So we'd really appreciate if you could consider doing that. Um, so getting into the video, I think we'll start with ice. So... Ice is a little bit of a controversial thing at the moment. We won't go into too much depth, but we'll talk about sort of more from a broader perspective. Um, so generally, I think you'd all agree that we tend to ice for three main reasons. That is, we, we try and ice for pain relief, we try and ice to decrease swelling, and we ice to decrease inflammation. Um, so when you hurt yourself, it's very common. You'll see most sporting teams, most sports people, even just regular people who have hurt themselves will reach for an ice pack because we've been told for a long time that it helps with all of those things. But what's really interesting to understand here, when we match up what we're trying to use ice for, and then we match up with what ice does, and then mix that in with what the body should be doing to get better quickly, there's a strong disconnect between those features. And what I mean by that is pain is normal, obviously. Swelling and inflammation are also normal. And I think the biggest misconception about this process is that we need to sort of influence those features, that we need to stop inflammation, we need to stop swelling, we need to decrease pain. Now, the reason why this can be a little bit controversial for some people is because ice does help with pain relief. It's not up for debate, there's fantastic research that shows that. But the question we wanna ask, the bigger perspective that we wanna to add to this is do you want to decrease pain if it also influences, negatively influences these other factors which are natural? So. As it turns out, we want your body to go through that inflammatory process because it's part of the healing process. And what we know physiologically, and any textbook will say this, is you can't have the healing process if you don't have the inflammatory process. So essentially what we're doing with ice, because we know ice decreases blood flow, um, we know what it does you know, physiologically, it's actually the polar opposite of what we want to happen for you know, optimal healing to occur. We, we want inflammation. Swelling, on the other hand, isn't necessarily good or bad. It's just the accumulation of waste at the end of that inflammatory cycle. So in, a, in effect, we're not necessarily trying to limit swelling. We're trying to help the body and facilitate the body's removal of swelling so we can get through that process quicker. So we're not trying to stop the inflammatory process because then we can't heal. We don't want to stop inflammation because that's just an accumulation of waste. We want to help facilitate the removal of that waste so that your body can, again, progress through that healing process quickly as possible, your muscles can reactivate, uh, you can you know, maintain that tissue quality that we often lose when there's uh, swelling present. So just as a quick recap, yes, ice is fantastic for pain relief, but it also sort of puts a, a pause on the healing process and potentially sort of prolongs the swelling and the, um, I guess, our ability to default into that next stage of the healing process. So, so when you put those, those three things together, we want to ask the question, well, do you want to ice just for pain relief if there's all these negative consequences which are going against what we've been trying to do by icing in the first place? We have the best intentions, but ultimately those intentions might be a little bit misguided based on what we sort of now are understanding about the healing process and what ice does and that disconnect. 
Um, the other thing about pain relief is we want to ask that question, well, do we want to decrease pain? And clearly, if your pain is a 9 or a 10 out of 10, it's stopping you from sleeping, you know, you just can't do what you need to do. Icing for pain relief is a noble thing to do. Again, you can probably handle a slower recovery just to survive in those moments. You know, you don't have to be a hero and suffer through pain if you've got something like ice that can help it. But if you're part of the majority of people whose pain is relatively manageable without ice, we don't want you to default to using an ice pack just because. Because if you're just using it because you've been told to use it and that you are sort of ingrained thinking that way, then ultimately we're going to be slowing down that rehab as opposed to speeding it up, which again is our intention in the first place. So, so part of this heat versus ice conversation, it's easier just to say, look, we don't want to ice injured tissue. We don't want to just ice for pain because of those consequences. So essentially, we shouldn't be icing an injury, basically. Now... If we know that ice decreases blood flow, which you know, impedes that inflammatory process, it makes sense that heat speeds up that process. So heat gives more blood flow to the area, which can, you know, um, can be a way to get more of those nutrients and more of those chemicals, those inflammatory chemicals into the area to help that healing process. But it's not as simple as saying ice is bad, heat is good, because the thing that we forget a lot with pain and injury is that the body has an appropriate response that, it's, um, that it chooses to use. And there's a certain amount of swelling and a certain amount of inflammation that occurs based on the body, what the body feels is appropriate. So I think part of the idea of this video is I wanna promote this idea that we don't necessarily have to influence that process to the degree that we want in terms of speeding it up or slowing it down. What we wanna do is basically optimize the body's ability to do what it's trying to do. So. When we're using a heat pack, yes, it'll increase the blood flow to the area, but the problem or the potential problem with that is the more blood flow, the more uh, inflammation and the more swelling. So if you have an injury where you're incapacitated, so say you've injured your back or you've torn a calf muscle or, or something where you dislocated a shoulder and it's in a sling, putting heat on the area will potentially exacerbate those, those symptoms. It might feel stiffer, tighter, sore, it might ache a little bit more, if we can't then move that tissue appropriately enough to balance out that increased blood flow. So heat, on the other hand, isn't necessarily a bad thing to do. Again, if it's a, it's a fresh injury and it's bleeding a lot, probably heat isn't great for it because it's going to increase that blood flow, potentially increase the amount of bleeding that occurs. Um, again, if it increases that swelling and it's not paired with enough appropriate movement, pain-free movement to balance out that swelling, then that swelling is going to pull you can have potentially more atrophy in the muscles, potentially more pain, and all these things associated with swelling. So as we said, ice has one effect on the tissue that's potentially negative. Heat also has a potentially negative effect or can have negative effects on that same tissue um, because we're interfering with that process. And we want to add that perspective to say, well, look, you don't necessarily have to use one or the other. So even though the title of this video suggests that it's one or the other, technically the answer is neither. But I guess the, the little catch here, the little twist at the end of this video that we want to promote here is that um, heat is still a useful thing to use for the tissue around the injured area. So if you have injured your back and there's a very specific part of your back that hurts, a heat pack is probably not a bad thing to use around the periphery of that. So we don't necessarily want to put the heat pack on the injured tissue itself because again, it may increase bleeding, increase blood flow, increase inflammation and swelling, um, which again can be hard to balance out at the other end of that scale. Um, but what it will do if you put it around the outskirts, the two things that heat is fantastic for, which can be really advantageous if you're trying to improve how you feel with an injury, is it's fantastic for down-regulating a heightened nervous system. And it's fantastic for freeing up stiffness and tightness. So those two things are really important because what we know about pain is that pain is your brain's perception of threats. So it's not just based on whether you've got damaged tissues or injured tissues. It's more a broader term that tells you how threatened your nervous system feels. And when you have an injury, so you injure those tissues, your nervous system has a spike where it, where it sort of spikes into that fight or flight response where that nervous system becomes heightened and you have pain. So what heat can be fantastic for is if you place the heat on your body and it can damn regulate that nervous system, give you more feelings of safety, non-threats, which can help damn regulate that pain experience. So 
So while heat may not necessarily be, be fantastic to use on the injured tissue itself, if you use it around the injured tissue, it can really have a, an indirect effect on your pain by making your nervous system feel safer and less threatened and decreasing that pain experience. The second benefit of heat, as we've mentioned, is that if you put it on a, in a stiff and tight area, it'll help, it'll help free it up. So if you've got some tight muscles, it'll help loosen those muscles again because it decreases the threat perception. But if you have some stiff joints, it makes that tissue more malleable so that it can move a little bit better. So the reason why that's important for a lot of things is that most acute injuries, so even if you acutely hurt your back or acutely hurt your shoulder, your knee, uh, your ankle, whatever it might be, generally that acute injury is preceded by areas of stiffness and tightness around that. So if you have a knee injury, it's likely that maybe your calf is tight, your ankle is stiff, your quadriceps are tight, maybe your hamstrings are tight, your hip is stiff. All of those areas pull slack from the knee and then when you have an injury, you've got this injured environment that also has a bit of a handbrake on at the same time. So by putting heat around those areas, it can help soften it up and free, uh, so feed some slack into the injured area, improving the way that it's loaded, improving the function, which can also feed into your pain experience. So I guess while heat, I guess I wouldn't advise using heat on the injured area itself, you can have some real positive indirect benefits by placing it around those areas by decreasing the nervous system, uh, the heightening of that nervous system and improving the function of the areas around it, feeding slack into the injured area. So, so I think ultimately the idea that we want to promote and the perspective we want to give you guys is probably don't reach for that ice pack if you're injured, full stop. You can reach for the heat pack, but maybe don't place it straight on top of where the injury is or where your pain is. Go looking for areas around that um, because it'll have some good benefits without necessarily compromising what your body's trying to do underneath that. So, so as I said at the start, what's really important to, to, I guess, to reinforce here is if you swear by heat or ice, please feel free to use it if you feel like you need to use it. But just be aware that there's potentially some broader consequences going on that you might need to consider if your goal is recovering as fast as possible or getting your pain to decrease as quickly as possible. If they're your goals, then maybe you need to take a step back and have that broader perspective so that you're not compromising the body's natural healing process in the process. Um, so hopefully that was useful information. Hopefully it gives you a little bit of an understanding about what you should be doing, maybe why you shouldn't be using ice, maybe why you shouldn't be using heat, but you can in certain circumstances. Um, and at least it's a conversation to have with your physical therapist the next time that you see them. So, uh, so thanks for watching. Uh, again, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like below. Let us know in the comments below what you prefer. Are you a heat person? Are you an ice person? If you do use it and you swear by it, let me know why. Uh, let me know what it is about that that you feel you can't do without or that you feel is really helpful. Um, and then we can have a conversation about maybe what's better than that or where you can sort of maneuver to improve what you're already doing. So, um, and as always, if you do like the content that we produce on the channel, then please consider subscribing. Again, it helps these videos get out to more people. Um, but uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. And I'll see you soon.